Priestman and I live in Stroud, Gloucestershire and work as a psychotherapist, supervisor and trainer. Therapy as Play is part of a video series exploring the themes of embodiment, relationality and wild ways of working. And I'm particularly interested where these three aspects of our experience interact and entwine. In this video, I'd like to explore a new way of conceptualising therapy, therapy as a form of play. I think the advantages of being playful as a therapist and a client are relatively obvious. It can bring more ease into the work, more relaxation, possibility of spaciousness. It can help build a working um, alliance together. I think that um, play comes quite naturally to me, it doesn't to everybody. So the advantages of being playful I think are obvious. We can try things on, it's lighter, we can make experiments. But what I'm actually wanting to talk about is not necessarily playfulness. What I'm offering you is a redefinition of therapy. Therapy as a form of play. So play can be really quite serious at times. Sometimes if you look at children, there's a, a real focus and, a, and an intensity in play. And, and the definition of play is an as ifness, as if it's the real thing, but not quite. Um, so you be mummy, um, I'm going to be daddy. Uh, you know, play as ifness, taking on roles. And that's what we do on the t all the time in therapy, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. That's what it's all about in a way. Um, but the as ifness, so that ambiguity and contradictions can be present, we don't have to nail it down. Love and hate can be in the same space. What's real and not real can kind of be a bit more fluid. Um, and I think of, of therapy basically as a learning process, learning about how we're structured, how we're constructed, um, the patterns that form and govern our body-mind structuring, both our embodiment, our relationship patterns, our beliefs about the world, our mental constructs. So we're learning about how a client, a client's map of the world that's conscious and unconscious. And play can be a really useful tool, a way in to study that. And we think of play with children as a really obvious activity. But with adults, it's less thought about. Um, but I would invite you to think of um, your therapy room, or if you work outside, outside space, as a play space. And how does that change it? How does thinking of therapy as, as a form of play bring advantages to your work? So what supports play? And I'm particularly thinking about what supports therapists here, because I think if therapists feel supported, then they will be able to do uh, your job so much better. So I think what supports play, basically, is being able to relax about the complexity of what the client's bringing and relax about your role. And I think the other thing that supports pay is a bit of freedom, particularly freedom from the strictures of the profession, um, membership organisations and our original trainings, their injunctions about what's allowed and what's not allowed, if we can free up a little bit around those things. Because basically play is about being able to trust, being able to allow a bit of spontaneity and about going into the unknown. So how can we step into um, the unknown and follow the threads of whatever's unfolding for a client in the trust that that's the way to explore unconscious processes. And I feel like thinking about therapy as play turns on its head the kind of things that practitioners that we need to support us. So I think we need a lot more openness, trust, um, and also what really supports me is the idea that, that my practice can be a creative practice. 
and in each moment with the client holds the possibility of following something new whether that's a gesture whether that's a movement whether that's a play of words whether that's an image so there's that kind of oh where does that go and that allows some spaciousness and it allows a kind of huh, and really increases my enjoyment of my work really I think it's what keeps me going and I um, 20 years in now I think I've been working and I think it's the relaxation and the being able to be curious. The modality that I trained in and that I, um, that I teach others is called embodied relational therapy. And embodied relational therapy is quite a playful modality. And it's specifically wanting to support practitioners to trust, to relax, to allow some spontaneity in their work and it emphasizes um, that therapy is a journey into the unknown and can we risk allowing strange embodied countertransference responses can we allow ourselves to be moved around and misshapen in our clients by our clients in the trust that that's the way for something to unfold also ERT as its name infers emphasizes embodiment relationship and wildness and play for me is central in that to be able to play we need to have access to all of this we it's about relating to other people and there's an inherent wildness in um, play because you don't know what's going to happen you don't know what's going to happen next so I invite you how would it be to think about therapy as play how would it be to be slightly more playful in your work? If you'd like to know more about these ideas, I'm offering a nine month long online training called Playing With Fire. The Embodied Relational Therapy training, which is two years long, starts usually every year in April and is residential. I offer, also offer monthly webinars, so check all that out on my website. I've recently co-written a book with Nick Totten entitled How to Be a Bad Therapist. So check out any of those and thank you for listening.